Irma, thank you very much for being here. We are at uh, the Singularity U Italy Summit in Milan, where you just spoke this morning about artificial intelligence. A lot of people fear AI as something alien, and uh, I don't think you agree with that uh, sentiment. Uh, no. Uh, fortunately for all of us in 2019, we have seen the splendor of AI literally unfolding in the last four or five years. Um, AI used to be feared because humans fear machines that seem to act on their own. So when we were talking about machine intelligence, everyone felt that the machine was going to have a conscience, an evolution of its own. But what AI truly is, is the natural evolution of our own thinking towards creating technologies and innovations that are really helping us create a better world. And AI is deployed in the world via mathematical algorithms, via deep learning approaches, which are basically teaching machines how to think like a tiny little human brain until it becomes an exponential, very powerful brain. But AI is a tool and uh, in every single sector of the sciences and the industries, AI delivers different things. So uh, in the pharma industry is helping pharmaceutical companies develop drugs that behave like our human cells. So they are able to adapt to changes in our cells. They, they present a growth and a, and a variability, which is not how drugs used to work in the past. You know, in the past, the drugs were very linear. This is for that, and that only, and that's it. And now the pharma industry realizes that what AI provides to them is much better ways to develop the drugs to how the human body is, but also with much less money. Uh, a typical development of a drug in the old ways would cost around $2.5 billion over 10 years for a pharma company, and that's unsustainable. Whereas now you can use simulations with AI and actually that's a piece of software. So it's, the cost is minimal and the exponential optimization is massive. You are uh, associated with a research organization that helps firms, companies, enterprises to uh, leverage the power of AI. What is your approach? How do you go about uh, delivering value to, to your uh, clients? So Deep Science Ventures is a scientific institute where young uh, postdoctorate uh, scientists, you know, the average age in the, in the scientific team is around early 30s, late 20s. Um, we bring their know-how towards uh, corporations that want to explore unknown unknowns. So a given corporation, for example, in the oil industry would come and say, do you really think that we need to invest in electric batteries? So then the scientists would then create scenario approaches. We would look at the realities of storing energy. Um, and, then, and then an idea would come that is truly able to be executed. So rather than think that magically science is going to find its commercialization, what we do is we look at the reality of now in a commercial environment and then we see how science can help. So we have a portfolio of close to 30 projects and half of them are run by AI uh, driven modules. Um, and we work across pharma, agriculture, energy sector, which is a massive sector. Um, and we constantly connect with scientific institutions to actually do collaborative approaches. Uh, each of these examples involve large companies. Uh, how do you believe the power of AI is going to impact smaller companies and can they leverage or do they just have to stand by as this wave uh, uh, crashes over them? Small companies have very specific problems. For example, most SMEs uh, need to optimize supply chain. And when you optimize supply chain with AI, you immediately see the benefits. And think about any company that ships goods or needs materials for them to build their products. Pretty much every single company in the world. 
you also need to deploy sentiment analysis if you really want to sell to human beings. So sentiment analysis is a part of AI that allows you to understand humans, to understand consumers, their behaviors, why they like the, your products. So AI has a spectrum of from major projects to small mini operations where you can leverage its benefits, um, which is why AI can come in all sizes. Uh, 30, 40 years ago, we had a top-down approach with expert systems, uh, rule-based inference engines that uh, didn't deliver fully on what was promised, um, common sense understanding or even something as simple today as telling uh, whether on a photo we see a dog or a cat was beyond what they could do. And then mathematical innovation made possible the current wave of AI applications because neural networks uh, through big data and of course very powerful hardware were able to create uh, uh, meaning out of huge amounts of, of data and make classification systems, recommendation engines uh, available for all those applications that you mentioned. What do you see on the horizon as we are pushing the current wave to its limits in terms of the promise of the next generation AI systems, both in terms of hardware and software approaches that could be different than not what we are seeing today? When we push AI towards computational outcomes, meaning whatever we create has to respond to physics or temperature or anything that is extremely based on computations, then the machines are second to none to actually deliver those outcomes. And in fact, today industrial design um, is being pushed by AI because if you need a machine to sustain gravity forces or that you drop it or the temperature, no one better than a program simulation to actually stress test absolutely everything, then you build it, yeah? And then you build it based on a proper simulation that has been tested as if it was real. But when you try to venture into the understanding of life, understanding of reality, understanding of contexts, why did this person jump on the train on that door? You know, these kind of things that companies, when they build products, they need to understand. Humans, they still have a secondary intelligence that is very biological. And people say, oh, it's the gut feeling. But it is gut because we know that we have intelligence in our gut now. We know that there's more neurons than in the brain in our gut. So many, many of the tests which have been done, for example, to understand images, we have taught machines to understand objects and things and individuals in the pictures, yeah? But when we have asked the machines, are they happy? Are they depressed? Are they sad? And we need to program the machines for that. Every single time the machine is tested against a human, the human has a much more accurate response because we capture information in biological ways. So when the questions are abstract, the human still explores in very ways. For example, Humans can use inductive and deductive thinking at the same time. A machine can't. A machine is still very binary. But a human being has a literal capability to actually deploy both. And one of the things that I do in some of my presentations is to put an image that could be two things. And every single person in the audience can see one, can see the other, and they can see both at the same time in a very natural way. And I said, you see, you know, this is, this is how our brain works. So we are moving towards a society where we will enhance the creative power of the individuals. We want them to be creative, optimistic, social, able to work in teams, uh, not having any mental barriers. Because when we need to deploy muscle to calculate things, a machine is going to do that, but then we need to then aspire, imagine, how could we use that? All of that is us. So we're separating both intelligences into two directions. The splendor of AI is going to help with human flourishing. 
Definitely. and creativity. Definitely. And I love the theme of singularity, Italia, when it mentioned Leonardo, because this is a country, Italy, is super engineering, super scientific, and also extremely uh, creative and abstract and artistic. I mean, is this is the fertile ground for that future. And I vouch for the many scientists and artists from Italy that I work with in many industries like the space industry or the design industry and, and is a leverage that Italy has, you know, over other nations that cannot be both. So I love it. I love it. Thank you very much. My pleasure.